Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we are here. This is going to be week number eight, I believe, of the ICBA. And uh, this is going, obviously going to be remarkably late, but um, I kind of did want to get the rest of these videos out just because, first of all, I want I do want a complete playlist and I want to kind of uh, show this kind of end of the season because uh, as of this recording, the season's already over, but uh, we are right in the middle of the playoff race, right? So we took a tough loss to Melon and that's going to put us at five and two at the moment. And basically, one more win would pretty much guarantee us a spot. Uh, and at that point, we're just kind of playing for seeding at that at this point. So I kind of wanted to show off. Like I said, we are five and two at this point. We are uh, one of the top seeds, I believe. At this point, we should be second seed, right under Kelly, under the radar. And we are up against a very very scary team. This was one of the toughest builds. Uh, for me all season long because pretty much everybody that I show this matchup to says dang you just kind of lose to make up a and pretty much straight up and that was definitely a difficult one but then you, he also has the Kiram and uh the dang tornadoes so here we are you can see lux's team he does uh have the uke super super scary hip out on Kiram tornadoes heliolisk and of course the mega blaze again which of course is going to be a monster but uh I'm gonna leave the tornadoes at home this time I'm gonna bring out the mammoth swine the uh infernape lele i've been decently strong lele and that's kind of gonna be the core and uh okay so here's the thing right i felt like i had to make a few guesses as to what he would want to do against me and i noticed that in his match against kelly under the radar he brought a special blaze again and i really thought that, that he would want to do that because i did have two strong water types that could be built physically defensively i had the alamola and i had the swamper both of which could kind of take on uh, his Blaziken. I saw that in his match against Under the Radar, he brought a Sunny Day Blaziken with Solar Beam, with Fire Blast. That kind of a set would really have uh, taken on my Almamola. It would have um, been able to handle a lot of my team in ways that I wouldn't have been well prepared for if I just built for a more standard Mega Blaziken set. So here I am with uh, my more specially defensive build. I have a more specially defensive build. I believe this is a Rindoberry Swamper to kind of eat up a Solar Beam, be able to hit back that Blaziken. And I believe my Lele is actually Assault Vested, if I remember correctly, just to be able to take a hit from the Mega Blaziken and be able to hit it back as well. And uh, from here, I'm like I said, I'm just going to try and assume that he has to uh, play that way in order to kind of take on mods like my Almamola. That's why I didn't even bring my Almamola. I, I didn't even want to overcommit to uh, preparing for a physically offensive Blaziken. But with that, I'm just going to get into this match. I feel like that's the proper context to be able to go into this match. It's going to explain a few of the plays that I make and uh, just how the, oh, the overall flow of the match. But... Uh, you can see that I choose to lead off with my Lele. I felt like it would be kind of the best anti-lead that I had available to me. Um, and it wasn't the most valuable in this matchup. I don't quite remember exactly what I brought it for. Um, uh, obviously, it is a Assault Vested to maybe take it from the Blaze again if it had to. But uh, that wasn't really what it was designed to do. But uh, I felt free to just kind of gauge his team, get a feel for his team by leading off with his Lele. And I do just end up uh, going for the Shadow Ball. Oh, one more note. Uh, I am on the other side. Thankfully, uh, Lux gave me his battle code because I accidentally deleted this battle video or something happened to this battle video. And uh, Lux was nice enough to give me a code. So appreciate that very much so. But I was able to Shadow Ball. He U-turns clearly thinking that I was going to... Um, switch out and i get a decent amount of damage and i'm able to get a psychic off on this tornadoes because this tornadoes misses an air slash which is hugely hugely um problematic problematic for him but uh he now actually does not know that i'm assault vested yet so he's going to have to kind of play this out as uh not really knowing what i have yet so i'm just going to be able to fire off another psychic and hit the uh a Yuxi on the switch as um he does reveal to be a flame orb set uh i believe i saw after the match that he was flame orb trick or something to that effect but he's going to try and play around here and uh double into a hip out on right and he's told me after the match that he actually made a calking mistake he accidentally put his put my lele at level 40 and so he expected his hip out on to be able to take these hits a lot better than it did but you can see just how much damage that uh shadow ball did and then i'm going to be able to hit it back uh, on the next turn with a stab terrain boosted psychic and uh just gonna do again just so much damage it's gonna be able to take him out he thought that he could take those hits but he was again calcing with a level 40 lele i don't think it would have made too big of a difference in the overall look of this match but uh that was definitely a little bit unfortunate i do lose my terrain which is uh also unfortunate but he brings this thing in and um i think i think he never was in a position to find out that i'm not 
that I am assault vested. So I am going to be able to kind of just play around him a little bit. I do. I am able to moonblast, which is going to prevent him from seeing behind the sub. If I did switch out because the terrain ended, that would have been super unfortunate and it would have given him a free sub. But I'm so very happy that I did not let him get behind a sub for absolutely free. So from here, uh, I'm going to be able to eat up a hyper voice. Even from the range that I was at, you can see if I wasn't assault vested, I would not have been able to take that. But because I am, I'm able to click Moonblast into this thing and bring it down all the way down to where Sandstorm is going to do the thing. And uh, I think that it, this is actually going to end up being a double down here. But I'm feeling really, really good. Oh, no, it's almost going to be a double down. But I'm feeling really, really good about my positioning because it's going to uh, force him to bring in the Tornadus. And this is this is where uh, the semi double down situation happens, right? So uh, here is where he can go into anything that that he wants but i'm feeling really really good about this uh start of the match because i got to deal so much damage to his team i took out the the heliolisk for free uh this thing is really weakened and uh the tornadoes uh had to take a decent amount of damage so now i can do the same thing i can you turn into whatever the heck i want here for absolutely free however looking back on it uh i probably should have just Flare Blitz into this thing because Infernape was probably the mod that I would that I would have most wanted out here against the Uxie regardless. Um, I'm going to be able to go into my Umbreon because I felt like my Umbreon would have been the best uh, possible option. And here, my, ki my kind of thinking here is that even if he does go into the Blaze again, uh, this Umbreon can kind of uh, assume that he would want to go... If he clicks sub, then I would be able to uh, foul play and always break the sub. Also, I should know that uh, he forgot to Mega Evolve. It was a complete mistake. It didn't matter uh, in the overall scheme of the match, but uh, it's just going to be a thing here, right? So he's uh, going to be able to sub, but I'm always going to be able to break sub with Foul Play. And if he clicks Sword Dance, then my Umbreon is going to disallow him from clicking Sword Dance, uh, or else he would be really, really low at that point. But he is a bulk up Mega Blaziken, and... Honestly, that's going to be worst case scenario because now I'm kind of stuck in this thing in here and clicking foul play repeatedly and uh, it's going to just put me in a really, really awkward position. Um, if he was Swords Dance, then I, I would have done double the damage and uh, that would have that would have actually put him in a bad position against things like my Swampert or something like that. But because he was bulk up, it's going to allow him to be able to take these hits. I'm doing right around a quarter each turn but it's not going to be enough because that's going to allow him to get to plus two plus two and i really have no counterplay to him being able to click high jump kick over and over again what i thought was that uh maybe i can play off missing or if i um had if i was able to get a little bit of chip through iron barbs and other and of course you would have to miss or something like that maybe i can uh, come back from this because again I did feel like I had a really strong early match but uh I'm gonna have to bank on him missing at this point and also another huge 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 point is that um Randy HLT suggested to me that um instead of instead of oh so my inferno is scarred but uh, instead of my last move, I think it might have been Endeavor that I had on the build that I showed him. He suggested that I bring Mock Punch, even because even Scarf Mock Punch, you know, maybe it would help me out in this uh, in this type of scenario. And he was right. I agreed with him. I completely agreed with him. But I forgot to make the change when I went to Gen, and uh, I believe the final move on my Infernape is Endeavor. So I had to do a lot of calcs. But uh, even at plus two defense. If I was able to mock punch this thing with after the iron barb damage and all the other chip damage that this thing had to take, a mock punch would have barely been able to take this thing out. And I mean, it was it, it might have still been like barely a roll, but uh, at 14 HP, I should have been able to take out this blaze again, even at plus two defense, which uh, just super duper sucks because uh, again, Randy HLD gave me the suggestion that I needed. Uh, he was absolutely right about his suggestion. I agreed with him, and I forgot to pull the trigger on on the suggestion, and. I think I put him in a really decent position. I put, I think I put myself in a decent position in the early game, and I kind of just squandered it by uh, not having Mach Punch for for one. But also, uh, just even things like Rocky Helmet on my Ferrothorn would have also bailed me out in this situation. I had other options that would have bailed me out in this situation. Uh, even even Mammoth Swine. I think Mammoth Swine didn't have the Ice Shard on it. 
um i think i went for some other crazy build maybe it was sub toxic i don't even quite remember but uh i went for some crazy build because i felt like i needed some kind of crazy coverage oh i, I think i remember actually i think my mammoth swine had iron head because i felt like that extra like 25 percent damage onto the kiram would have made a difference because uh iron head from my mammoth swine would have done like 75 ish percent and i thought like maybe like after if, I, if i'm in a position like after rock where that ever makes sense then that would have been a uh, pretty clutch but i mean ultimately like nothing really mattered if i couldn't deal with the blaze again anyway so that's kind of going to have to be how week eight ends um from here like i said another win would pretty much cement a playoff spot but uh, i would still like to play for seeds this is actually going to drop us to five and three it's going to put us on a two game losing streak and uh it is pretty rough but i think we're going to be able to manage overall it's just uh kind of maneuvering the rest of my schedule I think this was honestly one in the building stages. Again, if he was sword stance and not bulk up, then foul play would have done so much more damage. Foul play would have put him in a rough spot. And I think maybe I could have uh, started to do something. I don't know. Regardless, um, that's going to be week eight. We will be back with more weeks of the ICBA uh, and potential ICBA playoffs. More weeks of the PGP League War, as well as the AP Academy. Uh, more weeks of that to come really, really soon, uh, and some other projects probably in the near future. But once again, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Gonna be once again, out.